Hello, my name is Pablo Requena and in this video I'm going to show how to make the holes for the strings in the bridge. So there are several jobs, or actually there are many jobs to do in a block of wood to make it into a bridge. In fact, I will show you. This is a plank as you could get it from your supplier and to get it to this stage there's quite a few hours of work. Um, I've already shaped the wings and got the slots for the saddle, I inlaid the bone and it's quite advanced and this is the point in which it's time to be drilling the holes for the strings. Now the one thing that I want to do is to make sure that I drill the holes first and then I will dig out the wood in this middle area here because if I did this first and then the holes then when I drill there will be some damage in this part of the wood so I want to do the holes first and then removing the area to make a ramp so that the holes will show also in this middle part of the bone. So there's a couple of ways in which you can do this and if you're just going to make one guitar well as a one-off what I would do is to mark this very carefully with a very sharp pencil and what I normally do is that I drill the hole in the middle of the flat section that I have in this side of the bone but always making sure that the hole is not going to touch the edge of the bone okay because otherwise what can happen is that the bone could jump out and it will weaken the whole structure here so the hole that I'm making it needs to be always completely on the wood then the distance that I do in between holes is 11.5 millimeters and what I do is to work it out so that the first hole and the last one are equidistant to the edge so that everything is central now the problem with doing that is that inevitably as you go and drill in your pillar drill hopefully you don't want to do this by hand what will happen is that the drill bit always will move a little bit because the grain of the wood uh, will push the drill bit sideways so it's not unusual that if you drill the holes just without any other kind of help the holes will sort of be slightly up and down that's okay as long as you got them reasonably good but for me several years ago I came up with this little jig now I believe this is one of my own invention because I've never seen anybody using this and now I've uh, showed to a few other makers, friends of mine, and they all went really enthusiastic about it. So I've passed it on to a few friends and also they passed it on to their students. So hopefully there's a few people out there now using it. And I thought, well, it's about time that I show this um, on video as well. So basically I've got this little jig, which I got uh, made by a local uh, engineer company. And I've done a sketch over here so that you can see what this is and basically it's a little piece of metal with the holes on top so you got a little bit sort of 3D sketch over here and it's got an L shape with six holes and over here I give all the dimensions that you could need if you ever wanted to make your own or if you wanted to commission somebody to build this jig for you because Ideally, you need to have it made by somebody who's got a proper uh, engineering workshop. So you've got all the dimensions that you need here. And instead of going through all of them now, what I will do is that I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going to put it in my Facebook page. And then at the end of the video, I will put a link so that you can get to these pictures. And in there, I give all the dimensions in terms of the spacing in between the, in between the holes the hole diameter which is 1.5 millimeters diameter and all the dimensions that you might find that you need to be able to make your own jig or to have it made for you so if you went to any engineer with this sort of drawing in here there's enough information for them to be able to do it for you so that's that now let's see how it works so basically the holes are 11.5 millimeters in between centers so that's exactly the dimension that I wanted to have if you wanted a different dimension then obviously this jig is not the one for you I, in fact I have a, a few other jigs with different 
uh, spacing, but this is the one that I normally use for a standard classical guitar. And what I will do is that I will put my jig in front of the bone and I also made the jig so that it's 80 millimeters wide which it happens to be also the length of the tail block where the strings will be tightened later on. Um, so I make it so that it goes flush in this side and also flush in this other side and that way I know that all the holes will go in the right way. And the other thing is that sometimes uh, you know, it's a good idea to check that the hole is going to be drilled where you want to and obviously you're not going to be able to see this in the uh, video very, very easily but I'm just checking that yes this is going in the right place so when I drill the hole it will be exactly in the wood where I want it to go so I put this in here and then I've got this is just it's really um, a bench hook where to cut wood from and you can see it's got lots of cuts but this is 90 degrees here so I also use it for this job because then it means that I can put the bridge in there then my metal block here in the right place and then I just need to get a clamp and clamp everything together I'll check again and yeah that looks flash and that as well so just a little squeeze I don't need to make it super tight but the other thing is that having the jig or the, or the metal jig um, in this side it means that it's also supporting the bone so if the wood is sort of pushing and forcing things out the bone is not going to jump out and come out of place so we're ready to go and do the holes so over here in my pillar bin I've got this 1.5 millimeter drill bit and it's too small for this chuck to hold it so I've put it in this other chuck so that then I can put it into here nice and tight and then I'm gonna find out how deep I need, I need to set up the cutting so I'm gonna bring the bed just a little bit higher this is quite an old-fashioned drill so the modern ones now you have a nice crank here so that everything goes up and smoothly but I quite like these old-fashioned tools really so I've got my stop or my depth gauge there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that the drill bit goes down just enough to go past the second piece of bone so by that what I mean is that I want the drill bit to go all the way down to pass this second bone just a little bit I don't want to drill too far otherwise the holes will be in the wrong place so I just need to drill enough to get through the two of them so I'm just going to bring this down and I'm going to have a look and I think I will be happy with that so now I'm going to bring the stop in place and this drill is called like a double nut to lock it in place which is quite hard to do actually because they're both round so you just have to do them by hand but anyway I'm sure your drill is got an easier system than mine then check again and actually it needs to go down a tiny bit this way actually like that and that's it okay so we're ready to go
Okay, so let's go back to the bench and let's have a look and see what we've got here. Great, so now I have six holes and they are right in the middle of the rosewood here, which is exactly where I wanted them to be. And you can see, having a jig like this, you don't need to be marking out and finding the right place because this is always going to do the same job for you. And what it means is that then you can also be really accurate and you can see that the holes are all in the same line so they don't really go up and down like musical notes. So they work really well. And they will go all the way down to just past this part of the bone so that when I cut the ramp in this edge they will start showing up. Now sometimes, for this guitar in particular, I'm going to use six holes in the bridge, but sometimes you want to use 12 holes, two holes per string. So if that's what you want to do, you still would use the same jig, but all you need to do is to, once you've done the main six holes, like I've just done, you just go back to the drill, but this time, you, all you need to do is to offset this block by 3.5 millimeters or four, you know, the distance that you work out that you want to do, I usually do it 3.5. So I leave 3.5 millimeters between this edge and that edge. And that way, I go back to the drill and drill another set of holes. And that way, you have two holes per string, which very often that's what I do for my instruments. For this one in particular, it's an instrument that I'm building, not an exact replica of Hauser, but I like to use... Um, features and things that Hauser would have done in his own guitars and one of them is using only six holes that way you have the right type of break angle for the strings but that's, that's a different story for another time so that's it for now hopefully you'll find that this is not difficult to to get done for you and uh, like I say I will leave um, a link um, so that you can have a look at my Facebook page and I will leave some pictures and some information there so that you've got them just in case you want to use them and um, also to remind you about my guitar making courses which they happen in Spain in, in Torremolinos just outside Malaga and uh, if you really would like to come and learn how to do this I'm very happy to have you as a student and all you need to do is to go and have a look at my website um, which is www.guitarmakingcourse.org and have a look and see if you get the information there that you want so thank you very much for watching and until the next time.